Welcome to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. What do we got going on in the shop today? Well, I ordered this Torque Parts brand heavy duty air spring kit that I'm going to put on the Toyota Tundra. We have a 2012 Toyota Tundra double cab, four wheel drive, and we're setting it up to tow our travel trailer out to Montana. We only have a 19 foot travel trailer, but I actually have some extra payload I need to haul out there. It's a riding lawnmower that will be in the bed of the pickup truck. So between that and the tongue weight of the trailer, I wanted some extra help on the rear springs on this. So I'm going to put this on and see how it works. All right, I'm under here getting ready to getting ready to put some airbags in here. And I notice that this set of U-bolts is completely loose. And I have tried I've tried to get them loose with blaster. I've put I've soaked those with blaster and used my impact my air powered impact driver. And I just can't get those things to tighten up or to loosen up. So I have ordered a new set of U-bolts and I need to cut these off. Yep, got my safety glasses on. Next thing I have to do is cut these off to 10 inches. If I just used my grinder and cut those off, I would have fits trying to clean those threads up enough to be able to get a nut back on them. And what you do is you put the nut on and you run them up past where you're going to cut. Then just backing this nut off of there is going to line up the threads and make it a whole lot easier to, to put them back on under the car. And when you're when you're marking on black metal, one of the easiest things to mark it with is a white paint marker. All right, I just eased those edges back a little bit with that grinder. Wire brushing a bit. And they're probably pretty warm, but this should come off of there now. A little bit of resistance right there. Work it back and forth a bit. It's off and it should fairly easily start back on without cross threading. One more step on these. Okay, these are the same right and left.
plate is good up top. It's in between the hooks and it's centered over that hole. I'm gonna look it up for 74 foot pounds. See, my torque wrench is too close to the ground to be able to read it, so I'm gonna use the old uh, mirror trick. All right, so I'm on the nut, get my torque wrench, and I can see my torque wrench. That one. Let's go to that one. There's on that one. Okay, now because of the lift I've got on this, I've got a two inch lift. And so this is shy inch and three quarter. Need to extend this down inch and three quarters. So I need four and a half by two and a half. I'm gonna cut this one at five. Matches the profile nicely there. And about well, that distance there, so I just need to drill them holes. Good. Almost out of that.
this is ready to go up in there. This air in, inlet has to go through that existing hole in the, the frame there. And that's through the frame and the bump stop bracket. I've removed the bump stop from there. that a bit to get this slide up in there. Make sure that the rivets are aligned with those two holes and that just once it's in there that keeps that from wanting to clock. And these are aligned so that I can get the bolts on either side of the ring stack. And I'll show you my extended piece here. See how that now is riding against the axle case. And if you see this you can see exactly why that is necessary because the center line of this airbag is off the edge of the springs and if this wasn't here these these bolts here would not contain it because this right in here would be wanting to flex like this every time you hit a big bump that would fatigue along there but this prevents that and you can see that this shape here was supposed to be down against that, except that we have this two inch lift block in this rear suspension. I've seen some other videos showing installation of these airbags on Tundras with lift kits. And unfortunately I've seen the final installation looks like this is just hanging out in space and there's no, no extension down there. Now I built this, uh, extension piece for each site myself here in the shop. I've got good facilities to do that. If you don't have the facilities, I believe you can buy at least one of the brands that sells a airbag like this. I think it's the Firestone. Um, it's probably their 2506 extension and it's about 60 bucks for the pair of them with the bolts. But I chose to fabricate that myself and save that $60. But if you need, I mean, I think the only one, I don't know that the only one they make is a two inch, but if you had more than a two inch lift, you would need a longer piece of metal to, to extend that down. All right, so this is ready to be bolted down. Let's see if I can see the, there's, there's the air inlet stub coming up through there. Now I need to put the nut, or the washer nut on that. There's the washer. Okay, that's good. Now I know I'm down far enough, I'm not cross-threading because I can feel that stud just now getting to the, the nylon part. So I've got good thread engagement, no cross-threading. So I can go ahead and run that in. And I'm gonna be doing that pretty much blind. Okay, that's tight. Now, just for grins, I'm going to take the rubber cap that was on this stem coming up there, and I'm just going to put that over top of that push to connect. It's not a good fit, but it's just hanging there. It's just a, one more measure to keep dust out of there when I start banging around on stuff on the other side. So if you're questioning my strategy on leaving this thing sitting on the axles and not jacking it up while I'm doing these U-bolt changes. Uh, the main reason I'm doing that is because I don't like, I don't want to have to realign the axle on the, on the springs 
And if you've ever followed a truck down the road where it's kind of dog tracking, where obviously the back end of it is lined up on a different line than the front end of it, and it's just going down the road crooked, uh, that, the easiest way to do that is to jack up the rear end and loosen up your axle. So this truck wasn't dog tracking when I started this job, and the way I'm doing these U-bolts, there isn't any way that this thing is going to shift during this process because I've got all the weight of the truck, of the back end of the truck, on the axle the whole time. I haven't relieved it, I haven't, nothing has shifted. So the, from the time I took the old springs off, or the old U-bolts off, to the time I tighten on the new ones, everything is exactly in the position it started. So there shouldn't be any adjustments required for dog tracking. All right, I'm putting both of these next to each other, a 5 16th drill bit. I just drilled through the plastic there. And the metal, you can feel that the metal back in here, this metal cut out in the steel bumper is out like this. And the edge of the license plate will come to here. So you put both of the valves over here in 5 16th drill bit just through the plastic. One washer goes on the back. on the front and the nut and a half inch over the back Cap on it for now. Let's see if I can show you what that looks like from behind. This is the cutout in the steel bumper, comes around there. And this is the back of the plastic piece. And there will be room to route those and to where they miss the spare tire First thing I gotta do is take that dust cap off and this is gonna come eh, not terribly close to the muffler but sort of close so what I'm gonna do is put this sleeve And now this, as supplied by the factory, does not have a good cut on it. So I'm going to use my little cutter here. Yeah, you can really see that, that bad end on there. You've got to have a nice clean 90 degree. So I'm going to go in here and set that on there. Now you see that? Now I've got a nice, straight, clean edge. All right, got a good solid connection there. Got my heat shield close to the buffler there. All right, I have an assortment of these little things that are a combination of a zip tie and a hook that goes into the different holes and panels down here. There's another kind and another one. There's some of these in there anyway. There's a variety of these I got in the kit. I'm gonna see if one of them will fit in the holes that I have available to me up here. 
Okay, that's turning the corner. Can you even see that up in there? It's just running inside the frame rail. Comes out from there, hooks into that thing. Now we'll pressurize it and check it for leaks. Those are at 70 pounds. Let them set for a while and check the pressure and see how it's holding. All right, everything's still at 70 pounds. It's holding the air. Good to go that way. And it's good to go that way. Bear looks good. All right, well, that job wasn't too terribly bad. Took, took some time. It would have been a lot quicker and easier if I didn't have to cut off the old U-bolts, replace those, and then make those extensions. Uh, yeah, maybe the 60 bucks or so to, to buy the extensions would have been worth it, but I don't know. I like, I like doing that kind of stuff. So if you like watching this kind of stuff, Go ahead and subscribe. That's the best way to keep me motivated to keep on putting out videos like this. Well, in any case, before I fall asleep under the back of my pickup truck, this is PFO Channel signing off.